Two weeks ago on Two Wheels One Compass, we last left the Dakota War when Colonel Flandrau led the exodus of refugees out of New Ulm to safety in Mankato. As the war raged in the Minnesota River Valley, it seemed to spill out over the sides and into the surrounding countryside. Routes such as the Red River Trails were subject to raids, for example. The Red River Trails were ox cart routes that served as the main routes north into the heart of British North America and the fur trade. Before railroads were built, these routes through Minnesota were the best way for hunters and traders to get to the extremely remote settlements of the isolated Canadian Shield. The Dakota Warriors looted, raided, and killed travelers at river crossings and stagecoach stops all along the corridor in Minnesota, which completely halted all trade into the Twin Cities from the north. All steamboat and flatboat traffic along the Red River ceased. Fort Abercrombie, the first permanent military settlement in what is today North Dakota, was laid under siege as well. Since the day after the initial attack on the Lower Sioux Agency, forces were being mustered in the nearby state capital. The second governor of Minnesota, Alexander Ramsey, requested the first governor of Minnesota, Henry H. Sibley, to command the newly mustered forces that were to sail down the Minnesota River and take the Dakota head on. Still occupied with the Civil War to the southeast, President Abraham Lincoln formed the Department of the Northwest on September 6, 1862, and appointed General John Pope to command it with orders to quell the violence. If there was any doubt before, there wasn't now. This wasn't an uprising. This was a war. Down that way. There's a barricade right on the other side of that blue building. There's a, this, on the sign, there's, like a, there's a diagram with the draw out of of how the Sioux come up from the valley, from the river valley, oh, and they came up third, no, third south. I've spent quite a lot of time in New Ulm, but there's just a couple more places I want to visit before I continue my journey westward to Pipestone. For lunch, I found myself at Turner Hall, a community center built by and for the Turners who founded the city. In the basement of the building is a bar called the Rathskeller, which is a common German name for wine cellars or basement pubs. It claims to be the oldest bar in Minnesota, however, it wasn't open to the public until 2008. Beforehand, it was open only to Turners and their guests. The walls surrounding the pub are full of beautiful murals of the old country of Germany. The murals, however, share a story about a dark, paranoid, and violent part of Minnesota history. During World War I, the United States went to war against Germany. Germans, who for the last several decades made up the majority of the nationality of the countryside, were now looked on with suspicion. The number one foreign language taught in the U.S. was German, and many forms of media such as newspapers were in German. The state of Minnesota created the Minnesota Commission for Public Safety, or the MCPS, in 1917. The main function of the MCPS was to manage resources for the war. It distributed food, controlled the prices of certain goods, and allocated fuel reserves. It was unfortunately also known for its use of secret surveillance, intimidation, and other extreme tactics in the name of protecting the public at large. Many Germans favored neutrality in World War I, which caused the authorities to become further worried with their intentions. The New Ulm Post and New Ulm Review were heavily monitored by the MCPS. Albert Steinhauser, a publisher of these papers, was arrested and expelled from the Minnesota State Editorial Association for criticizing the war. This isn't the only case of the press being jailed for speaking out against the war either. Three politicians, the Brown County Auditor, the Mayor of New Ulm, and the City Attorney of New Ulm were deposed from their positions by the Governor for holding a meeting discussing the constitutionality of the draft. The President of Dr. Martin Luther College in New Ulm was also forced to resign for speaking out. Certain textbooks were blacklisted and could not be used for teaching German in schools. The MCPS began registering unnaturalized aliens or non-natives to the United States. Germans who spoke out were met with shame or violence. Many kept their head down and stayed quiet. At the Rathskeller New Ulm, the murals on the walls were covered by cloths. They were not to be viewed until they were uncovered in the 1980s. This is Rathskeller. The paintings in the walls around us were covered during World War I, up until about the 1980s. There was a lot of friction between Germans and the rest of the United States at the time. Several officials were fired from their positions in government by the governor of Minnesota because they had been speaking out against World War I because they were trying to be isolationist. New Ulm's connections to World War I were a hundred years ago. The connection to World War II was much happier. You don't normally put those words together. Kraut. Of course I did. For my last stop in New Ulm, I rode over to the Cottonwood Group Center, a camp reserved for German prisoners of war in World War II. We're at the Cottonwood POW camp. So what it kind of took was to ride the motorcycle all the way through town to the nearest bridge, cross, ring back around again, 
to a little plot of land that technically does belong to the Flandreau State Park. The area is very pretty and isolated from the town by river. I'm trying to imagine how tough it would be to be held here as a German POW in World War II. Let's imagine, sorry, I ran here. <sighs> trying to make up for time because I don't want to set up a pitch a tent in the dark. So it's already five o'clock, takes two hours to get there. I think we'll be right. Whew. Imagine, it's 1942, 43, the United States, post D-Day is starting to take over most of Western Europe. You end up being taken captured. You've heard horror stories about what the Russians are doing to the Axis, so you think you're gonna be tortured, killed, who knows? Instead, they fly you to New Ulm, Minnesota, the most German town in the Midwest. 160 POWs were sent here in June of 1944. Most worked for a cannery nearby that ended up paying rent for the, uh, for the POW camp here. They were very lucky POWs. Many of the people here still spoke German. Uh, they learned about news from their relatives about what was going on in the war in Europe. And they had Lutheran church services. One POW ended up actually escaping and spending time with a neighboring farm family. He had such a good time, they ended up driving him right back as if he were a buddy they just picked up on the road. And uh, they ended up having to go to court. They were fined and told about how serious it was that a German POW escaped. It's not really looking good for the camp here, but in retrospect, there really wasn't anywhere for them to go, and they couldn't have done much damage, nor do I think they really would have really hated it here. They were able to play music. Many people visited from the town to play German songs. They were almost at home here in New Ulm. Uh, in turn, because we had taken care of our prisoners of war, the Germans did the same to the United States to an extent. Uh, when you take care of the prisoners of war on one side, the other side typically tends to do the same, at least in European wars. Uh, the Russians, holy shit, did not do that. So the Germans returned the favor. I don't know who really did it first, nor does it matter. The majority of the bloody fighting in World War II was with the Russians and the Germans. Take it to the bank. Argue me. I don't care. The Russians and the Germans had it the worst. There's a German brewery nearby. Like, these guys were really pampered. One of them ended up actually returning and staying here. He moved to Wisconsin. I know. Wisconsin. That is really all I have to show you of New Ulm. That's all I really can afford to show. There's obviously days that you could spend here. I ended up seeing a lot of the same people on the Shell's Brewery Tour around the city getting things to eat and, and sightseeing. Like this is honestly, it's really strange being a tourist in your own state. There's so much, I'm sure, around every single one of you that you have the opportunity to go to at any time, but may just never go to. I seriously, honestly, wholeheartedly suggest it. You don't know what you're missing out on. This is gorgeous. Imagine some German getting drunk off base, escaping, coming back from hanging out with other Germans, and they make him run up and down here as punishment, clean the latrines. One can only imagine what had happened here. They thought they were going into the jaws of the beast. I'm sure many people just saw the American way of life. Well, now I gotta hop on a motorcycle. I gotta get my ass to Blue Bluffs State Park. Because we gotta get back on track with this Sioux War and go across some of the flattest, most drab parts of our country and my state. But hey, it's worth it. And a lot happens out there. Surely much more than any of us know if we've never lived there.